Hey, welcome back to APC. I'm Matt, and this is gonna be our video of how to prepare your Ford Transit for our wall kit interior. In this video, we're gonna show you what you don't need in the Ford Transit, what we're gonna take out of here. We're gonna show you how to modify your Ford Transit, move our wiring harness, cut the foam blocks up front. We're gonna show you a couple quick details about the Ford Transit, things that make it unique, the eight millimeter factory rib nuts in here, uh, the hardened steel locations in the van, things you need to know. And then we're gonna show you what you need to add. So we had some rib nuts in the ceiling, we had some rib nuts in that hardened steel areas up there. So stay tuned and let's get it done. So right here we have a brand new Ford Transit. Uh, we're gonna show you the initial steps to get this thing stripped down and ready for installing your wall kit. So first things first, we're going to have to remove all the plastics that cover the Ford factory wiring harness. Uh, this thing can pop off here, and for us, it's garbage. So don't worry about damaging anything. Uh, the little clips inside are going to break too. Don't worry about any of that. We're going to toss it all in the trash or recycle or whatever. Um, so yeah, without further ado, let's get to it. So I just used my panel popping tool. Uh, you're definitely going to want one of these if you're building a van. They're pretty inexpensive. Amazon. And I'll just go through. Really, once I get it open, I can just pull this off, set it down, same thing. Pop those up there. And then there's some individual clips on the wiring harness itself. We're just going to pop the wiring harness out of these clips. And there are other little clips here that are holding the harness in. We can use our panel popper tool there and remove, remove those. Now we do want to be mindful when we're pulling these clips out. We want to keep these intact. This one, well, this one in particular feeds our lights, so this is going to come out. But there's another wire here that feeds our satellite radio antenna. That's going to stay in place, so we just want to be gentle with that. So now our wiring harness should be free of all these plastic clips. We can go ahead and pop these out. I use my panel tool and just pop them right out. Here. Okay. So now our wiring harness is free. At this point, we can go ahead and disconnect our overcap lights. So to do this, we just want to depress this button here, slide that out. Lights are going to go off. We can start pulling this harness out as well. To pull these factory lights out, I'm going to use the same panel popper tool and push it in this little clip on the side, pop one down on the opposite side, do the exact same thing, pops right out. One, two, okay. now we can just unplug the light.
undo our grommets, take this wiring harness down. And for us, this is trash. Uh, for you, you can use it for something if you want. The lights are actually pretty cool little lights. For the back wiring harness here, we're gonna do the same thing. So we'll just pop this out of these tracks here. So I'm gonna leave this zip tie right here. This is one of the factory zip ties and that holds this harness. There's actually wire that goes inside the wall here and goes down to the lights. We wanna keep that intact because there's not enough room to, to pull this back out. Um, same with on the other side here. There's one right in this corner that's gonna hold this wire going down to our lights. We're gonna keep that intact as well. Some folks undo all the wiring, feed it back through the wall and feed it through the interiors. If you wanna be that ambitious, go for it. I don't think it's necessary. Pull those out. Do be mindful of this is connected to your rear view camera. So just don't pull on that excessively. Uh, you also may have factory lights in these locations. If you do have factory lights here, go ahead and pop them out. Okay, for our next steps, we're gonna pull out our factory tie downs as well as these rear door catches. For that, we're gonna need a wrench, a 13 millimeter socket, and a T40, whether it's on an Allen key or on a socket, we like them on sockets here, but whatever. Uh, so all the factory tie downs, are gonna be throughout the van. Usually it's like eight to 10, something like that. This one actually had none of them in there. So we grabbed one just to give you an example. So we just 13 mil socket and go ahead and pull them out. Our floor system comes really close to this height. So we want these out of here as well as our wall system is covered, covering these. So we just don't need them. Now to take these rear door catches, there is a bit of a trick and they are fragile. So this is one you do wanna go a little slower, be mindful. Uh, there's two little pins that hold the back of this in that are really easy to break and it's a pain to put them back on if they're broken. So we just want to slide our pin popper tool here at the back of the back of this latch. I give it just a gentle pressure to pop it down. Once it's down, it's just going to slide right off the back. So inside here, you can see this little tab here and here. These are the pieces that'll break off and then the part just doesn't hold on once those are broken. So again, gentle pressure. Once that part is down, then you just gotta wiggle it off of there. And it's like, grab our T40. So we're gonna pull these rear brackets off so that we can upholster this rear column. A lot of people don't upholster these columns and it just makes the van look unfinished. So we do have another video coming up that's gonna show you how to do these just like we do here in house. Take a look at that for some of those tips and details. So at this point, I put the hardware back in that cleat. I take a piece of tape and I just tape over those bolts to make sure they stay with that bracket because it might be a couple weeks till you get those put back in. Are they symmetrical? They are interchangeable, yes. It does not matter which one's right and which one's left. At this point, we're also going to take these plastic covers off. Um, they just pop out and pop off. There's really nothing to them. Uh, we like to take these off to do our upholstery work. After you do your upholstery work, you can put these back in. That's totally fine if you need to access these plugs, whatever. I usually just upholster right over them and don't worry about it, but I save the plastic panel. If for some reason a Ford Tech needs to get inside here, to do something, affect the wiring. You want this so that you can put that back on there and it looks nice in the future. I'm gonna set those aside. Also, while we're here, we do have a Ford factory grounding point. To pull this off, it's just a little lip here. Pops that cover off. These are the factory grounds for their wiring harness. Just leave that stuff right there. We don't have to mess with that. We just want this cover out of our way. And then do the same thing on our passenger side. Not out. There is an option to get a factory 12 volt plug put into this spot right here. If your van has that, I would just go ahead and pop that out at this time. You can upholster over it and put it back in and rewire it. It's gonna be tied to the factory harness. So it's not gonna be very large gauge wiring. So you're not gonna really run a large accessory off of it. And 
we want to run everything off a house battery system. So everybody's different. You make your own decisions, but uh, I would just take it out. We also want to remove this cover. This is how we drop the spare tire in the vehicle. So we don't need this for our kit because our floor has an access and we give you a 3D printed plug that covers this. Before you put your flooring down, I would suggest taking this thing out so you don't accidentally cover it. That's it. This access here is for our rear door catch. We can leave that existing in place. We can leave all the other pieces in place. Just pull that one out. If you're using our floor kit, we do provide you with our ABC step. Our flooring system is gonna come into about here. It gives us a 33 inch opening. And then we have a step that's, in my opinion, a little bit superior to what Ford gives you. If you're using our step, then you don't need to be gentle with this step at all. We can just pop this thing out here aggressively. If you're gonna save this, but you wanna add your flooring down and around it, you wanna be careful, pop these little uh, tool, these little plastic plugs out of here, and then pull it's a little uh, Torx key inside of there. So you pull those little Torx screws out. For us, I don't need them. So we're just gonna grab the step at the front and pull out. It pulls these little plastic retainers out and those are the pieces that you would want to be a little more gentle with if you're going to reuse this step. For us, we want it in this condition, so they're out. If you have a 2020 or newer Transit, you most likely have a little plastic cover here. And this covers some of the new hardware they added for the electrical door system. So there's a minor change here. Our wall kit's going to fit around it. The older models had a little bump out in them. But uh, either way, we're just going to pop this off because we don't really need it. So. There is one white plastic plug in here, and if you want to save it, you got to get to it. Just like that. So we're just going to get our panel popper tool in there, push around the sides of the Christmas tree, and that's going to open that thing up. So you can go ahead and save this if you want to. We just upholster right over the top of it, and don't worry about it in the future. Every door in a Ford Transit is going to come with a plastic skin here to cover the mechanicals of the sliding door. But for us, we're going to pull this out of here and replace it with our kit. So to do that, we just use our panel popper tool, Insert it into the center of this plastic plug. That's going to take the pressure off the tree. And then go ahead and pop that piece out. So now that's out of there. We can go through and strip all of them out. The last four are going to be little screws here at the very bottom. These are little torque screws. So these three are pretty easy to hit from the inside with just a regular hand tool. The last one in this corner is going to be a challenge. But we're going to open this sliding door and I'll show you a trick to get it out. So to get this last torque screw out, the best thing I've found is to open the door so it's in line with this gap in our wheel well. And that'll allow me to get an actual screwdriver, a wrench, an impact driver, whatever I'm doing to pull these out of here into this space and give me a little room for a tool. Otherwise, I'm just too tight up there in the door frame. Okay, we're here at the front of the van. We want to pop this headliner down just so that our ceiling can underlap this. So we're going to put our ceiling in between these two. But to do that, there are three points where this headliner is attached to the factory. We do want to be gentle with the headliner because we don't want to crease it. But you look there's a little orange plug in there we can use this panel tool to pop those out It'll be easier if you're taller than me there we go so that's it that's all we need for now um, and that's all we want to do there now we can get under here we can insulate above our headliner we can put sound dampening up here it's gonna make a huge benefit to your ride quality so I definitely recommend doing that if you're adding a ancillary shelf or something like that over the top of your passenger compartment. Uh, this would be a good time to do that too. You could be as ambitious as take the whole headliner down. We don't think it's necessary. So this is the front upper section of our wall kit. It's gonna fit in this spot right here. We have notches here to fit with the roof, the roof cross beams, but as you notice, the foam block does not fit with our, fat, with our wall panel kit. So we need to cut this foam block. It's gonna make it easier to wrap in the future as well. So we do not pull the foam blocks down. In my opinion, they're just too tough to get back up and have them look nice. If you do pull them down, it's not the end of the world. You can get them back up, but I think it's best to just wrap them in place. So I use a piece of aluminum stock, a scrap of something around to protect my wiring harness. I'm going to slide this over the harness and behind the foam block. So when I come through with my knife and cut this block in place, I'm not going to clip my wiring harness and damage any wiring. This is probably the most nerve wracking part of a van build for me. And I've been building these things for like five, six years. So give myself a little bit of room here. I want to measure just so that I make sure my harness is in there deep enough so that when I make my cut, I know I'm not going to clip my harness. Okay. 
So I got my mark here. Just make sure I'm past it, just like that. Now we can take our knife, and I'm just gonna cut in plane with this edge of the of that block. It doesn't have to be exact, but you'll end up hitting right with the inside of this as well. Here, get it right. Now I'm pretty close. I can just go ahead and use my panel popper tool, pull this last plastic pin out. And I should be able to break this foam before I cut it. There we go. Okay. At this point I can take this out of here. And I just want to do a little bit of trimming to clean this edge up. that's gonna be ready to wrap. Okay, so we're gonna do the same thing on the passenger side again. We're just gonna cut in plane with this. Remember, there's no wiring harness on this side, so this is probably a good one to start with. A little bit easier. Panel popper tool here. Before we move on to the next step, we're going to lightly zip tie our wiring harness up and just secure it up here at the top of the van. To do that, I take a couple of zip ties. If you have a longer one, that's great. We have a lot of 8 inch zip ties around here, so I just link two together, feed it through this lowest point here, and then go ahead and zip over our wiring harness. So don't go super tight right now, we're just going to get it nice and loose. And then we're just gonna make a nice gentle curve or a nice gentle line between this point that's secured and our upper points up here. So we don't wanna get it under too much tension, but where we can, we'll just add zip ties to secure this wiring harness. So something like that is going to work just fine. Here at the back, we actually just use some duct tape and tape it up here in this corner. Once our ceiling is in and our fabric is in, it's all going to get glued and adhered up to the roof. For now, a couple pieces of duct tape or something like that, just to stick it up in this upper corner as tight as we can is going to be best. Same within this corner. We just want to try and get this into the corner nice and tight. Our wall kit's just going to cover it completely. So don't worry about exactly where it's going to fit. It's just going to get hidden behind the wall. On the passenger side, we have the same thing. We have hardened steel here. So don't forget, there's going to be hardened steel behind this panel, this little tab that comes down here. Can't put a screw in that. All this stuff is going to be fine. Here at the back of the vehicle, this column is also hardened steel, so we can't put a screw in any of this, as well as it underlaps behind this. You can see these are the little pop, or pop welds here. And that plate comes to right about here behind that. So you're not gonna be able to put a screw into this section of that van. You can put a screw into that section of the van. So we just want to keep in mind, this is all gonna be hardened steel behind here, this way. So that, all this stuff is hardened steel. We're not gonna be able to put a screw in any of that. That stops here. So this is hardened steel, this is not. So we can put a screw into this if we need to. We don't need to with our kit. If you want to put something up there, go nuts. Now that our foam blocks are trimmed, 
we can do a quick rough test fit of our upper driver side panel. This upper panel is going to slide in place. We're just going to use a Sharpie and we can mark through what holes are going to line up with these. So when we pull this down, we can see these four holes are going to line up with the corresponding holes in our panel. These will fit a quarter 20 riv nut without any messing around. So we can fit a quarter 20 riv nut in there, pop it in, and then we're going to bolt this panel up and that gets us around that hardened, hardened material. Same thing happens here on the passenger side. So using the same panel. And just go ahead and mark. We can see, oh, it lines up right here, 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 and here. We're gonna add rib nuts to all these locations to secure this panel over the passenger door. While we're on the topic of rib nuts, we set a quarter 20 rib nut to secure this upper panel. For our ceiling, our ceiling comes patterned to add a rib nut in this location right here. So we have our big factory hole. The next hole just inside of that is where we're gonna add our rib nut. Here at the shop, we add an eight millimeter rib nut and that's so that our hardware matches the inserts that are here from Ford. So this is a Ford factory rib nut. These are welded in place and this is an eight millimeter. So there's one here, there's one here, there's one here, all the way down this side at this level. All of these are eight millimeters. And so when we add our rib nut in the roof panel, we want to add them right here. We do have to open these holes to fit an eight millimeter in. It's up to you. We used to do five sixteenths, but then we had to have different hardware for the wall and for the ceiling. So just use your best judgment. So we add rib nuts in the ceiling because this corresponds with our overhead cabinets. And we put a piece of unistrut along the ceiling here and our overhead cabinet is going to bolt into that. So for our build outs, we bolt in a piece of unistrut along this location, along the roof, as well as down here at the lower position. These are also eight millimeter rib nuts here. So we bolt in unistrut into all these locations and that's how all of our cabinetry adheres to the van. That way everything is nice and safe and bolted to the frame of the van. Alrighty, so now in theory we have our rib nuts in place. We need to block this upper wall section to account for the thickness of our wiring harness. So what we do here at the shop, is add a one inch piece of Owens Corning foam or pink foam to just space that wall kit out so it's not pressing on the harness itself. So we glue in a foam strip right below this level of the harness all the way down the side of the van and then where the harness dips below we put that up above. So that way our wall kit just fits around that wiring harness and we don't have any conflict of you know pressure or anything like that. Uh, so we're going to add that. We're going to jump inside the shop and we'll take a look at a van that is in the next stage of this process. But we have the CNC running, it's pretty noisy, so I wanted to talk about that a little bit out here. Before we jump inside, I also want to talk about how we finish the roof to put in our ceiling. So once we have our 8mm rib nuts in the ceiling panels, we're going to put up furring strips. So furring strips are extra pieces of quarter 20, they can be half inch material. We used to use 3 8 crappy plywood from like your big box store. Uh, it doesn't matter a whole lot as long as it can do good screw retention. So a 3 8 piece of normal plywood is probably comparable to a quarter inch piece of Baltic birch. So we just want to add furring strips up here. We make them as wide as our track saw, which is about seven inches wide. And then we just put a two inch hole around this rib nut so we have lots of room. So we're going to screw up a strip of wood that runs the length of the van in this location. We put one right here in the center for the center line, and then we match one out here on the edge. If you want a nice clean line between your ceiling and your wall kit, I recommend putting a half inch piece of Baltic birch right along the edge of these all the way along here. So that we have a nice consistent place for that ceiling to push against and you give a really nice clean line where your wall meets the ceiling. So in this van, we are going to add a fan in this front location, probably the most common location for a fan to be added, which means our roof strip here in the center, our furring strip is gonna conflict with our fan. So when that happens, I just stop my furring strip right here at this front column. And then I put a horizontal furring strip between my furring strip here and here. Now we have a good place to screw my headliner to. The reason we put a full furring strip down the center and down these lines, so we can get nice even screw placement along the roof. So we don't have them, we're not trying to hit these ribs. If you're just trying to hit the ribs and put your screws into these, it's half Swiss cheese. So you're gonna be much more successful by putting a piece of wood and using those to attach a furring, or your ceiling to. When we install our furring strips, we use a self-tapper metal screw. So we're just tapping into this steel column of the band if I miss and I hit a hole, something like that, it's not the end of the world because we're, none of that's going to show. So I can just pull it out and move over next to it. 
Uh, we just want to get all those frame strips up nice and tight and secured. We run the frame strips to the front here. At this point, our headliner is going to curve pretty radically down and into this section. So we don't want any furring strips impeding that bow up here at the front. Same thing here at the back. I do like to run my furring strips towards the back of the van here because it just adds some extra stiffness to that roof panel. So we get a nice tight fit against the back, back of the van. So along here, you can see we have that foam locking pushing out our wall here for our wiring harness. We have our furring strips up. We have our rib nuts in place. We also have our fan hole here, our furring strip stops here, and then put a perpendicular piece up here at the front so we can get a nice secure position here. We also have our rib nuts in the walls, using quarter 20s. Boom. So this has been our video of how to prepare your Ford Transit for your wall kit install. If there was something we missed or something you still need to know, let us know in the comments below. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, please do that too. We have lots of videos coming out. We're gonna teach you how to build these campers just like the pros.